Well, there's we a lot know of lonely people in churches. Yeah. They may have a lot of relationships, but they don't feel like they can be their genuine selves. They can't be vulnerable with people. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Epic Every Day, our weekday podcast for busy, overwhelmed Christians who don't want to stay being busy and overwhelmed and instead want to live in freedom and abundance and peace. I'm Liz Frerichs, and this is my husband, <laughs> Evan. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Trying to not rattle my papers too much. But. Uh-huh. <laughs> As you guys know, we work our way through the CSCs. They are being calm, surrendered, centered, connected, and complete. And the show is set up to remind you that they're still important, and you still need to apply them and encourage you, you know, maybe some specific areas or ways that you haven't thought of before. Yeah, it's a daily process. It's a constantly it's a constantly developing and growing process. We've been trying to right. do it for a few years, and we're always learning something new about ourselves through it. This week, we are talking about relationships. Friends and relations, yeah. as Rabbit would say. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Since it's Wednesday, we're going to talk about being centered. So when I thought of centered, I thought about the ways that other people... Um, may push us off that center. It could either be intentional or not. Yeah. I um, think it's really easy to snap back into your... Well, we talked about that with the holidays. Like when you're around your family and friends more often, you can snap back into patterns from either your childhood or whenever you saw those friends last. Yeah. Or even like when you're in school, when I start acting like, people you're around the most and like I said it's not always malicious um sometimes it just has to do with time spent I mean yeah family of origin is a huge one because that's where you grow up and that's how you learn your default settings and right what common sense is to you and but yeah then could go away to college and start to act kind of differently right not that we know anyone <laughs> who's done yeah, that <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah I mean it's really who was it that said you're the average of the five people closest to you? Uh-huh. So that's why it is so important. You know, we've talked multiple times about having, you know, propellers, maintainers, and um, drainer. Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. So thinking about it that way, you want to have propellers in your life because if you're the average of the five people closest to you and you have a bunch of drainers in your life, mm-hmm. it's going to be bad. Something we want to watch out for with those people is where our values are different because that's going to have a big effect on our center, I think. Yeah. You know, the kinds of what is our motivation, what's their motivation. Um, and that's a kind of a thing that could be passive. Like they may not be saying, here, make this value your own, but just the way they live their life is going to be fairly compelling, I think, for some people. Some people right. may be able to resist it more than others, but I think everybody will struggle with becoming like their group yeah I agree um I do think that it is possible I mean we're not trying to say you shouldn't be friends with non-christians or um you know if if you're you should because the thing that drives me crazy right now especially on Facebook is that everybody is friends with people who are exactly like them and so it just turns into this echo chamber yeah. Where you're, you say something and everybody goes, yeah, it's so true. Da, 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 da. And it's really pushing that divide between, you know, different parts of our society further and further apart. So just because someone has different values from you doesn't necessarily mean that they're a bad person to be in your top five group, but they need to have some things in common. Yeah. Well, and we're not saying that it's guaranteed to happen that you hang out with people and you become just like them. Like what right. we're saying is that's... Although Proverbs can, does say that that happens. Yeah. <laughs> but if our center really is God, we should be able to move around right. the world and still maintain our center, no matter what right. anybody around us is doing. Yes. We're just talking about some of the, the pitfalls. Um, so what are some other ways that relationships could steal center? Well, I was thinking about... You know, I I love talking about that angle thing. Like if you're just a couple degrees off on if you have a triangle kind of and you're 
talking about one of those angles and then yeah. you follow it out like maybe you're only an inch off when you first somebody knocks you just a little bit off but if you stay an inch off then it's bad yeah, <laughs> you're it's, miles off later on right yeah like the angle you hit a golf ball or or take right. off running right if, yeah right it seems small at the beginning but then you're going to be miles away and I think one of the great things about the CSC is is that it's not about doing it perfectly all the time. It's about recognizing it while you're still an inch off. <laughs> yeah. Before you get to be a mile off and going, oh, course correction, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, or anywhere along the way. As soon as right. we, you know, I think we tend to ignore our alarm system sometimes. We just keep going. But if, if we can wake no ourselves up to... <laughs> But if we can turn ourselves on to our alarm system and start to course correct when it, wherever we are today, start right. course correcting today. Yeah, whatever. I love that idea of just letting go of whatever is past and dealing with what actually is happening now. So, yeah, that was one thing that I wrote down that, you know, being off a little bit. And I think it's really interesting, too, that we've talked before about the TED Talk that Andrea Pennington gives where she talks about how... She became a doctor because her parents were like, you can't make money being on stage, so you should become a doctor. And so, and how miserable she was and how she started treating all these people who were sick because they weren't being themselves. And then they were getting healthier once they started expressing their true selves. And she was like, wow, I got to start doing that, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So I think... You know, we, we sometimes suppress it for so long, especially when we're in the context of different friendships. And, and whether that's from, you know, fear of rejection or like we were talking about snapping back into those childhood patterns or um, college patterns or whatever yeah. patterns, you know. Yeah. Um, we still, we miss out if we're not ourselves. Because if we're not being ourselves with people, we're not actually having a relationship with them. I think we sometimes forget that. Like we're like, oh yeah, we've got this awesome relationship. We hang out regularly. We have fun together. But if you're not actually being yourself, it's it's a false yeah, false construct, you know? And unfortunately, I think a big arena where that happens all the time is in our churches. Yeah. We show up and we're that guy, church guy. You know, uh -huh. <laughs> doing finger guns at everybody and pretending everything's just fine. And I mean, that's a pretty extreme example, but I think well, there's a lot of lonely people in yeah. churches. They may have a lot of relationships, but they don't feel like they can be their genuine selves. They can't be vulnerable with people. Right. Unfortunately. And it takes practice. I mean, if you haven't learned how to be vulnerable, it's hard. It is really hard. Um you really have to do those little vulnerability tests with people because not everyone's a safe person to share with. Yeah. Not everyone is who you want in your top five. And personally, I find it very encouraging that you're just supposed to have a top five. Not you a know? top 200. <laughs> yes, because sometimes I feel like there's this push to, especially in the church, like you need to have relationships. You need to have relationships, be part of a community. And especially as someone who is homebound a lot of the time, it's hard and the people that I'm closest to are actually people that don't go to our church because they those are the people that are willing to have long distance relationships. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, get it where you can, right? I mean, and God in His wisdom can expand geography and and any number of things, right? And I don't think, yeah, and it's amazing that there's technology now that you can have a friend that's across the country, definitely, and it's actually your friend. Um, I mean, this funeral I went to a couple weeks ago was just amazing. The guy's best friend spoke. And so these are people, they were probably, must have been in their 70s, I guess. I don't know. But so before technology, and they had this 40-year-long relationship, and the guy was just like, I had one or two great friends, and this guy was one of them, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole lifetime worth of probably pretty good relationships, but right. one or two really great friends. So, yeah, it doesn't have to be hundreds of people. Definitely. But we do need to be vulnerable. And I think our uh, our good friends can encourage us to, to do that more and more with other people. 
Yeah, because we have that kind of that safe retreat. It's just like with children, how, you know, when they're they're little, they cling to you, they need to be by you all the time. And then as they're secure in your love and they grow and they're, you know, they start investigating and they go further and further away from you because they feel like they have a safe place to yeah. come back to. Like that's what allows them to come out. And I feel like, you know, that's what we need to focus on is how do we have this safe place, whether that is, you know, family or friends. Um, obviously, it needs to start with who does God, you know, your relationship with God and letting him define who you are and moving out of that place. But, you know, creating that home base, I guess you want to call it, like a place where you are safe and that you can then go out of is so important mm -hmm. and part of that home base yeah it's going to be our closest friends it's but it's got to be our relationship with god that he's our our rock and our fortress right our center definitely one of the things that i wrote down was create your own train track like mm -hmm. if you're going to snap back into some kind of pattern create your own train track where you're snapped in your wheels are locked down and that can be you know different verses that you have written down to remind yourself of who God says that you are or if you recognize that you're someone who, um, you know, maybe you have a childhood pattern of over-responsibility. That's one of mine. Yeah. And being able to say, wait a minute. Okay, I know when this started. I know why it started. Who did God design me to be? Oh, he's the one that's sovereign. He's the one that's the perfect responsible right he's <laughs> yeah. a responsible person yeah. and and having verses that remind me that the only person i'm responsible for is myself ultimately mm -hmm. yeah i think there's an interesting balance there where i think we can try to parse out where this pressure is coming from like oh that this person's putting the pressure on me to act a certain way but i think it's really like the way you described it, it's coming from in me right i'm the one with the choice to either surrender to that person and who they say I am, or just or to God, and who says he is, who he says I am. Yeah. And I, I don't know. Just the older I get, the more, you know. Looking back as a kid, like I felt like I was fairly chameleon-like, you know, and I just act like whoever I was around. And it felt like they were the ones saying you got to act a certain way, but it was really me putting the pressure on me to to try to blend in or to try right. to, you know, stand out or be cool or whatever it was. And mm -hmm. like seeing that now, it's like. We're putting this pressure on ourselves and we right. can come back to our home base as much as we, all throughout the day since it's spiritual. Yeah, definitely. And if we have those, those things that are part of our train track, whether, like I said, you know, verses or, you know, just ask yourself what makes you feel most like you. Like for me, it's not just, there are many things that make me feel most myself. I've written on my blog about how there are certain stories that are just, yeah. I, they just, it's like a chiropractic adjustment for my soul, mm -hmm. you know? They just put me back into, this is who I am, this is what's important to me. So when I can feel myself getting off center and pulled in many directions, one of the things I like to do is to read one of those things, you know? Mm -hmm. Or take pictures. That's another one of mine. Yeah. I think, yeah, whatever it is, and that's fine because we do need adjusted. We're getting jostled around out there in the world. We're getting, you know, we're absorbing new information and ideas all the time, and mm -hmm. we're trying to, like, examine them as we go and examine ourselves. And God knows we need reminded. I mean, the whole Bible's full of reminders. Yeah, seriously. And that's just part of human life. It's fine. Mm -hmm. As long as we heed the reminder. Yes. Yeah, we have to keep pulling ourselves back on track. Thanks to everybody that's been sharing. We really, really appreciate it. Um, if you have found this podcast helpful, please do continue to share it with people. We love you guys, and we really we pray for you regularly that you will have greater freedom and abundance and peace and, you yeah. know, be Spiritual yourself. growth, yes, absolutely. Because if you're not centered... That's one of those things that really throws everything off. Come back tomorrow and we will talk some more about relationships, specifically about 
being connected. It's actually relationship day tomorrow. So. <laughs> Let's talk about relationships and relationships. There we go. <laughs> I look forward to seeing you then. Talk to you later. Bye.